Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for implementing the Parent, Family, and Community Engagement Webinar for Early Childhood Systems. This is the second webinar in a two-part series. A couple of weeks ago, we introduced the Parent, Family, and Community Engagement Framework for Early Childhood Systems, and today we will talk about um, strategies for implementing the framework. I'd like to start by allowing our presenters to introduce themselves. Um, I'll be moderating for just the first few slides. My name is Shella Merchant Juma, and I am a program manager for resource development with the National Center on Parent, Family, and Community Engagement. Uh, I'll invite our speakers today, Josh Sparrow, Anna Lovejoy, and Nancy Darlington, to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Joshua Sparrow. I am executive director of the Brazelton Touchpoint Center at Boston Children's Hospital and co-principal investigator for the National Center for Parent, Family, and Community Engagement. Thank you all for joining us. And hi, everyone. This is Anna Lovejoy. I'm a senior associate with the National Center, and really glad to be here with you today. Thanks. Hi, I'm Nancy Darlington, and I'm a training and technical assistance specialist with the National Center for Parent, Family, and Community Engagement. And for those of you who are joining us for the second time, welcome back. And if you're here for the first time, welcome. Thank you, Josh, Anna, and Nancy. So I'll go over the objectives that we have for today's webinar. <clears throat> Today we want to uh, learn about different actions states can take to promote a systemic, integrated, and comprehensive form of family engagement in their early childhood systems. We'll explore some related resources and strategies for action planning to imp implement the framework for early childhood systems. And we'll also identify some action st steps that states can use to strengthen family and community engagement in your early childhood systems. Um, the, the point that I want to emphasize here that we're hoping you'll get out of today's webinar uh, is that you'll walk away with some resources and strategies for action planning and implementing the framework. All right, so I'll turn it over to Nancy and Josh now to kick us off to give you an overview of the PFCE framework for early childhood systems. Thank you, Shella. This is Nancy. Um, based on the results of that poll and seeing that the majority of you are here for the first time, um, we did a fairly in-depth overview of the framework in the first webinar. But since for many of you this is your first webinar, um, I'll do a bit of an overview again, but I, I won't go into quite as much depth as I did the first time, but you'll, um, hopefully you'll be able to answer the question of what is a PFCE. And if you want to know more about the framework, then you can certainly um, dive deeper by downloading the resource itself and reading it. But I'll start off by just saying that we understand that family engagement is essential to high quality services for all children in early childhood care and education. And this framework for early childhood systems is a visual guide for understanding how early childhood systems components can be aligned to support early childhood programs, providers, family caregivers, family child caregivers, and community service providers. Together, they all work with parents to promote positive, enduring outcomes for children, families, and communities. The PFCE framework for early childhood systems includes the program level framework, which you see in the middle there, but it adds the systems level context in which states operate in an effort to bring a consistent vision and framework for family engagement to the entire early childhood field. And I'll just briefly talk about the different pieces of this framework. You'll see the arrow across the top where it says positive goal-oriented relationships. These are relationships that develop over time through interactions among individuals in early childhood systems and programs. When these relationships focus on shared goals for children, providers and families can experience the support that comes from knowing they are all on the same team. And these types of relationships strengthen early childhood programs and systems and are core to every aspect of them, which is why we have that as the arrow which binds it all together. Working backwards, you see the purple column are child outcomes. 
The child outcomes that are listed in the framework are in line with state and local early learning guidelines early and early childhood systems and programs. Strive for these overarching outcomes that children are safe, healthy and well, learning and developing, engaged in positive relationships with family members, caregivers and other children, ready for school and successful in school and life. These outcomes are also aligned with the child outcomes in the Head Start Early Learning Outcomes Framework. Now the blue column are the family outcomes. We all know that children develop in the context of their families. And this column lists seven family outcomes that research has shown promote positive child outcomes. Now the first two columns, the yellow and the pink column, are the program elements. These are the foundations and the program impact areas, which are systems and services that promote strong family engagement and child outcomes. The PFCE framework for early childhood systems shows how early childhood systems components and program elements can be coordinated to strengthen program quality and promote positive family and child outcomes. And you'll see the circle around the very outer circle around the framework, equity, inclusiveness, and cultural and linguistic responsiveness are overarching family engagement goals. And these goals are achievable when they are prioritized within and across all the system's components and program elements. The inner circle there, you'll see the seven state and local early childhood system components that work together to promote effective parent, family, and community engagement. And those areas include policy regulations and standards, leadership and governance, infrastructure and funding, state, regional, and community partnerships, community consumer education and engagement, professional and workforce development, and continuous learning and quality improvement. And we're going to look at several of those um, systems components today in a little more detail as we talk about how we're going to be implementing this framework. Now we know terminology varies across state and local systems, so for the sake of our discussion today, we thought it would be helpful to be grounded in the terminology that we will be using. So when we talk about family engagement, as you can see on the slide, we're talking about an interactive process through which early childhood education providers and other professionals, family members, and children build those positive and goal-oriented relationships that we talked about. Building those relationships is a shared responsibility and requires mutual respect for everyone involved in the building of that relationship. And it's really important to understand that when we talk about family engagement, we're talking about doing with families, not doing two families or four families. It's a partnership. Another term we use is community engagement. And this is referring to that same kind of mutually respectful, strength-based interaction that, we're, that we discussed in terms of family engagement. But in communities, these take place among community members, agencies, families, early childhood staff at all levels. Interactions between early childhood staff and community agencies build positive, culturally and linguistically responsive relationships. These relationships support parents' roles as valued community members and their progress towards their goals for themselves and their children. So just a few other key terms that I'd like to review before we move on to make sure we're all understanding the same things. That when we use the word systemic, we're talking about, now this is, this is referring to um, Head Start and early Head Start programs, but basically when we're talking about systemic, we're saying that family engagement is everyone's business, is another way to say that, that it, it's, it appears everywhere and everyone has a role to play. When it's integrated, it means that all parts of the program produce better results when they work together, when they're all working towards parent, family, and community engagement. And comprehensive program services are designed for holistic staff responses. 
So basically, it's understanding that family engagement needs to be embedded throughout a system and is everyone's business. So I'm going to turn it over to Anna now to take us into a little more depth in some examples of how to implement the family engagement framework. Take it, Anna. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So good to be here today. So um, much like we did on the first webinar, and it, it, looked, it sounds like um, some of you were able to join us a few weeks ago, but many of you weren't. So this is another chance to share some of the approaches and, and thoughts that we have um, that we shared last time and uh, uh, to walk you through some of the definitions of the system components of the PFCE framework for early childhood systems, and also to share some hypothetical state scenarios that we've compiled uh, with input from um, a number of states that we worked with in a peer learning community uh, for about six months, um, and uh, learning about what states were doing, were thinking about doing, and so all of that helped to inform some scenarios that we thought might be helpful um, to offer some concrete ideas and suggestions for what states might um, want to do within the context of each of the system components so that we really are getting to that systemic, integrated, and comprehensive um, uh, parent, family, and community engagement. So um, in the, the next couple of slides, I'm going to be referencing a few different resources that, that we have. And these are all designed to help you to both understand the PFCE framework for early childhood systems, but also um, reflect on what is currently going on in your state, um, consider a range of ideas uh, for additional actions that you might take, and then engage in some action planning with a, uh, a team of stakeholders from across your early childhood system. So a uh, few of the, the resources that we'll talk about today one includes is the um, uh, action and implementation guide, which uh, has uh, information about each of the system components and the uh, state scenarios. Another is an assessment workbook that walks you through uh, 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 assessment tables that um, relate to each of the system components. We also have one sample state scenario, which is uh, um, basically a hypothetical state that, uh, and we show exactly what's going on in that state within the context of each of the system components to show how a state could, could you know, one example of how a state could work towards that systemic integrated and comprehensive PFCE. And then uh, finally, there's, um, we wanted to mention to you again, we shared this on the, the first webinar a few weeks ago, but we also developed a crosswalk of the uh, uh, CCDF final rule um, uh, specifically the provisions most directly related to family engagement, and we crosswalked those with each of the system components just to help give a visual guide to, um, particularly for state child care administrators, um, sort of how important family engagement is to the, the requirements of the CCDF law, um, and also, uh, again, driving home the fact that it's systemic, integrated, and comprehensive, and, and shows up in several different sections of the final rule. So let's um, just really quickly, I wanted to just share a little bit about this, the action and implementation guide. Um, as, again, as I was saying before, it includes um, the definition of each of the system components. It off offers a range of opportunities that states might consider in terms of making the, um, uh, family engagement concrete in their uh, systems, and then um, again offers examples of hypothetical um, scenarios in states, territories, and tribes. So let's take a look at one of the scenarios that we have, that we have developed, and this one is related to the system component that we call policies, regulations, and standards. So I'll just kind of review the definition of that, and then I'll share a little bit about this particular state scenario. So what we mean when we think about this system component is really the fact that eligibility policies, quality standards, licensing rules, other legislative and administrative requirements all impact families, programs, communities, and systems um, with 
and within the early childhood system, leaders can look for existing federal, state, and local policy opportunities within children's health, early care and education, and family support to emphasize PFCE as a priority. Um, uh, it, uh, in some cases, system leaders also have the authority and influence to change existing policies or encourage others to do so. And in all cases, the wisdom of families, providers, and community members can inform the policymaking process and the development of regulatory guidance and implementation tools to ensure that desired results are achieved. So that's what we, that's kind of our, um, you know, definition of policies, regulations, and standards as a system component. So we, um, uh, developed a uh, hypothetical state that, uh, in which um, a state legislature passed and the governor signed new legislation that defines family engagement in early care and ed education settings, actually using the PFCE framework for early childhood systems. And the law charges the state's Department of Children and Families with developing resources to support the implementation of best practices in early care and education programs. So that includes childcare and state-funded pre-K. So the agency used the key indicators of high-quality family engagement for quality rating and improvement systems, which is a resource that has been developed by our national center, and we'll share a little bit of information more specifically about that in a few, a few minutes. But uh, essentially, in this scenario, the state used that resource um, to inform the development of a suite of self-assessment tools for family and center-based child care and state-funded pre-kindergarten programs. The statute, also, or the, um, statute also requires the agency to allocate a portion of the state's child care and development block grant quality set-aside dollars to fund coaching and technical assistance to help programs complete the self-assessment tools and develop action plans to improve practice. So that's an example of what one of the um, state scenarios in the guide looks like. So we wanted to share another one, um, again, to offer um, a better understanding of more of the system components in the framework, but also to give you some concrete ideas for what this could look like in a state system. So if we look at the system component related to infrastructure and funding, and by this, we mean that um, financing decisions, fiscal policies, and infrastructure can impact how well and how quickly family engagement becomes integrated into a comprehensive early childhood system. System leaders can allocate resources to efforts that have the most potential uh, for family engagement to impact. They can offer incentives and rewards to promote continuous improvement for programs and systems, as well as promote collaboration across children's health, early care and education, and family support systems. And the infrastructure that supports a coordinated early childhood system together includes systems for quality rating and improvement, licensing and monitoring, consumer education and engagement, and the coordinated use of data. And this infrastructure provides opportunities to promote family engagement integration at all levels. So what might this look like in a state? Well, we came up with a scenario in which a state engaged in a process to promote family engagement as a priority throughout its early care and education system. Um, state agency leaders designated um, a uh, inter interagency team to identify and um, uh, repurpose existing resources to support early care and education settings to adopt the relationship-based competencies to support family engagement. Um, which is another uh, series of resources that our National Center has developed um, to uh, guide practice, and we're going to share a little bit of information about that in just a minute. So the, as a first step, the state issued guidance for uh, new provisions in contracts for the statewide child care resource and referral network to provide training and technical assistance and support to programs on the, the relationship-based competencies. Um, they also recommended that uh, the agencies for children's health, early care and education, and family support deliver joint training on the relationship-based competencies to all eligibility and intake staff. And then finally, they recommended that the state child care administrator use it, uh, the CCDF quality improvement set-aside dollars to provide training and coaching about the competencies and to promote the use of um, uh, uh, a series of assessments for supervisors and staff that accompany the relationship-based competencies. 
So this is a, an example of uh, a state taking the resources from the National Center um, to really improve practice and also to um, uh, integrate different approaches throughout the system. Anna, this is Nancy. If I could jump in for a moment. We had a question in the chat, I believe related to the first scenario, wondering which state did this work. Um, maybe you could explain a little bit how the scenario was developed. Yeah, so that one is actually a little bit of a, an embellishment or a riff off of what we know, um, particularly in the state of Indiana has done um, for their pre-kindergarten program. Uh, and also, I think, um, related to some of what the state of Maryland is, has done um, through their uh, QRIS system and their um, uh, uh, quality improvement efforts. Um, so we, um, yeah, they both states were part of our peer learning community that we held um, about uh, 18 months ago. And they, they were able to share information about what they had done um, and the tools that they had developed. Um, in fact, if I get a break and can go fishing for the um, the links to their the tools that they both states developed, I will try to put them in the chat box a little bit later in the um, conversation today. I can do that. Great. Um, and also, I'll take an opportunity right here, Anna, to share a, an example of another state that's very much related to this scenario on infrastructure and funding. And let me start just by giving a real brief uh, description of the relationship-based competencies. They are a resource that was developed which describes knowledge, skills, and individual practices that early childhood professionals need to engage families effectively in positive goal-oriented relationships. So we talk about the importance of developing those relationships and the, as we call them, the RBCs, give you some tools on how to actually do that. So the example I'd like to share is the state of Pennsylvania. They made an intentional commitment to ground early childhood systems across their state on a foundation of positive relationships. These systems included child care, the Department of Education, Health and Human Services, just for some examples. They began work on what they're calling a birth to college, career, and community ready family engagement framework. So a family engagement framework really across the board. And they incorporated the relationship-based competencies into the foundational practices of this framework. In addition to using the RBCs for the framework development, they provided training on the RBCs for professionals across the state, including CCR and our staff. Uh, there were representatives from higher education, early childhood professional development people, some management and data systems people, just to name a few. This level of integration of professional development on the relationship-based competencies not only provided everybody an understanding of the competencies across a wide range of systems, but provided a common connection to that family engagement framework that they were developing, which helped get people on board to understanding the framework, accepting it, and implementing it, which, as you all know, that's no small feat across a large state with so many diverse systems, which may all have very well-meaning goals, but sometimes it's, it's difficult and cumbersome from, for them all to work hand in hand for the benefit of families. So Pennsylvania is doing uh, quite a lot of work on the, the concept of family engagement across all early childhood systems. So I wanted to share that example. Thanks, Nancy. Um, just real quick, uh, I know we're, we um, have about a half hour left, and we did want to share one example um, uh, given the fact that we actually have a number of tribes represented today. So just very quickly, I wanted to share another scenario that um, we developed uh, based on our interactions with uh, a number of, of tribes that we held a, another peer learning community uh, with uh, over the last year. And so in, um, this, again, is based on some of the conversations that we had with these tribes about what they're already doing and what they're thinking about doing. So in this particular scenario, uh, Tribe's Director of Children and Families is responsible for administering the 
uh, Child Care Development Fund uh, and Family Support Funding to offer prenatal to five supports and services to families. And in, in addition to direct services, the state is, um, uh, or I'm sorry, the tribe is using a portion of its funding to compensate families for their contributions to program level decision making. They um, to also conduct surveys and focus groups with families and to offer a series of parent um, cafe style conversations for families and program staff to build a common understanding about children's health, services for children with special needs in their families, early care and education, family engagement, and school readiness. So now we wanted to take a, um, share with you a, a glimpse of what the assessment workbook looks like and actually go through an exercise in which we share with you some of the um, uh, recommended actions that are included in the assessment tool and ask you all what you, know, what you are doing in your state um, currently and whether any of these actions give you ideas for what else you might you know want to do in your state so we're going to take you through it and we're going to do that using um, the system component related to professional and workforce development so just essentially this assessment workbook um, is designed to support a, a basically a, a group of stakeholders uh, for playing different roles in the early care and education system to take a look at what's going on in your state and, um, again, identify opportunities for additional actions that you could take to really get to that systemic, integrated, and comprehensive level of PFCE. Um, it's important, uh, and, and we learned this through our peer learning communities with both states and tribes, it's, you know, it's important to bear in mind that no single program or division or agency bears the sole responsibility for family engagement, and likewise, no single policy, administrative rule, or funding decision alone can integrate uh, family engagement system-wide. And so to achieve the positive outcomes for young children that we want to see, again, it must be woven into the decisions and actions that take place throughout the system. Um, and that, of course, requires collaboration across agencies and programs and a shared commitment among stakeholders to work together toward a common goal. So that was kind of the, the overarching um, uh, principle for, for developing our assessment tool. Um, and I'll just briefly share a little bit about how the tool is organized. It's uh, set up into three parts. The first part um, uh, offer steps to help you organize a team of partners and stakeholders and prepare for a planning process and a goal setting process to strengthen family engagement in your system. Part two is an assessment tool for reviewing the status of actions already underway um, and you can use that to gauge the extent to which your system is currently promoting systemic integrated and comprehensive family engagement. And then part three is uh, a guide to developing an action plan for strengthening efforts across your system. So we're going to quickly sort of walk you through that using the um, workforce and professional development um, um, uh, uh, system component. Sorry. Um, I'm going to come back to this. So we thought um, one, one way to do this before we dive into the workforce and professional development uh, component, just looking back at the um, scenarios that we've already presented on, um, you know, showing how a state could have used this uh, assessment guide to inform the work that, that they're doing and the actions that they took. So if we go back to that state that had um, family engagement that was defined in, um, uh, in legislation, and use the key indicators to develop program self-assessment tools and provided coaching. Um, if you um, look at the table related to policies, regulations, and standards in the assessment workbook, you'll see that item number three in the action table, which says there are ongoing actions in our early childhood system that set quality standards for PFCE in early childhood programs and services that are research informed, strength-based, et cetera, et cetera. 
So in this case, the state could have used this to say, hmm, we you know, really don't have that. So they'd click or check off, not started. Or you know, we're thinking about that, um, but it, and it's something that we'd like to do more of. Um, and maybe the group took some, some notes and throughout the whole process of completing the self-assessment, came back to this uh, and identified it as something that they wanted to work toward and recognizing that they, they could use the resources like the, the key indicators to really um, make some meaningful and concrete changes to their system um, and, and provide additional coaching and training to really drive practice. Um, so. That hopefully just gives you a, a quick um, example of, of how a state might have used this. Um, before I go any further, I just want to check in with um, Nancy to see if she had anything else that she wanted to say at this point, or if there are any questions that I've missed from the chat that we want to, before we move on to the um, actually asking you all about um, uh, what you have going on in your state related to professional and workforce development. Oh, this is Nancy. I don't have anything to add at the moment except to just um, echo what Shella said in the chat, that if you download the assessment workbook, you'll be able to see these categories and all of the different um, suggestions that they have in there that, that, you can be, that you can assess your program on in each of the system's components. So this is just mm -hmm. a little snippet of one piece that we wanted to show the relationship to the policy regulations and standards scenario and where they may have gotten some ideas by doing the assessment. Okay, great. So let's look at the workforce and professional development system component. So the definition um, uh, relates to the fact that early childhood system leaders can ensure consistency across the fields of health, early care and education, and family support through appropriate professional development opportunities. And along with input from families and frontline workers, data about the strengths and needs of each system's early childhood providers and professionals should be used to create an array of resources, training, coaching, and other supports for individuals in the full range of roles and sectors of the early childhood system. So this is what the table looks like. Um, and we're going to start in by taking a look at um, some specific actions. So among those that are in this table, one is there are ongoing actions in our early childhood system that set goals and targets for the recruitment, training, and retention of a workforce that is competent in PFCE practices and engages families as valued early childhood consumers, and that are um, that is culturally and linguistically reflective of the families they serve and the communities in which families live. So we'd like to invite you to think about those actions for a moment and rate yourselves, uh, just to, to yourselves, um, uh, uh, you know, according to the status indicators. So the indicators, um, uh, um, refer to sort of the, you know, the degree to which things are, are happening currently in your state. Um, not started actions um, are those that have not been started or just aren't applicable to your state um, or your tribe or your territory. Emerging are actions that are in the planning or early stage of implementation in one or more agency program funding stream or initiative. Progressing actions are currently underway and moving toward full implementation in one or more agency program funding stream or initiative, but are not yet on track for full implementation. And excelling actions are those that are fully implemented and may be achieving intended results in one or more agency program funding stream or initiative. I think I'll move on to the next set of actions. This one relates to um, there are ongoing actions in our early childhood system that reinforce research-informed PFCE workforce competencies for early childhood professionals that A, help professionals build strengths-based, goal-oriented relationships with families and engage families as valued early childhood consumers, B, address barriers to equitable opportunities and promote positive outcomes for all children and their families, C, are specific to the roles and responsibilities of all professionals working in early care and education, including subsidy intake workers, and D, are embedded into training and coursework across all relevant institutions of higher education in the state, territory, or tribe. 
Anna, I'm watching the chat, and um, I'm just really thrilled to see how many people are either progressing or excelling in their states in the the questions that were on the first slide, particularly, I think they're talking a lot about relating to the cultural and linguistic responsiveness. And mm -hmm. I think we've come a long way, and it's just exciting to see that happening and being reflected here in the chat. Yes, that is, that is really very exciting. And I'm so excited that we have additional resources that we can share now to help support um, states and tribes and territories in moving you know, mm. uh, moving to more towards uh, action in all of these areas. I noticed a, a couple of comments from at least one or two of the tribes who are talking about language immersion programs they have and the children becoming fluent in their native language. Mm. Lovely. One um, uh, just sort of story to tell from our experience with the state peer learning community, we actually asked the states that participated to test drive this assessment tool, um, and they helped us to really refine it and, and hone it down um, into kind of, you know, the, those most important actions that uh, are, you know, most relevant and impactful. Um, and, but what was interesting is that many of the states had a team of individuals um, who played different roles in their early childhood system, but all participating in this as a team together. And so sometimes you'd have a, um, an, a, a case where someone in the um, child care, child care uh, sector um, would, you know, answer these um, uh, or respond with um, indicators that were different than, for example, the someone from the state-funded pre-K side of the of the house, and so um, a lot of the value to their use of this tool was in having those individuals come together who, you know, sometimes, you know, as, as we all do, um, you know, work in silos. And um, so having an opportunity to come together to share their different responses and to inform each other what is going on in different parts of the system um, and what can we um, learn from and beg and borrow from, from others that, you know, we could also use um, to inform uh, you know, other, other things that are going on. So that was um, a, a, an important aha, I think, for all of us, that um, it's, it's, it's a great way to get those conversations going and those ideas flowing. Um, let's see, I think we have one more table that we wanted, or one more set of actions that we wanted to share. And so this one is, there are ongoing actions in our early childhood system that establish requirements for staff in the early childhood system, including subsidy intake workers, to complete standardized training based on research-informed PFCE competencies. A, as part of individual certification, professional licensure, and continuing education. B, as part of program licensing. And C, among quality indicators in quality rating and improvement systems. Um, and in this example, you can see that related system component column, the second column, we indicate where, um, you know, this type of action also relates to a different system component. Because all of these things are so interrelated and integrated, um, sometimes it was hard to um, decide where to put an action, um, you know, in the context of which system component. And so um, we figured instead of having a tool that was overly redundant, um, we would just indicate where, you know, um, the, a particular action might also have a lot of relevancy to another um, part of the system. And that, again, underscores the whole systemic integration um, theme that we're, we're talking about. So. Um, and this also is, um, is an example of the type of action that you can really see as cross-cutting because you may have, for pre-K teachers, um, you may say that, yes, we're excelling in this because, yes, we do have these for our, you know, um, teacher certification requirements for pre-K teachers, but not necessarily for our child care providers um, or for child care licensing. So that, that's, this is an example of when um, you know, members of a state team might bring different answers to the table when they all got together to, to discuss, um, you know, their findings and implications. So. so the next 
step that we're going to go through is the um, reflection piece of the assessment guide. So before we move on, um, I just want to check in with Nancy to make sure that um, I haven't missed any uh, important things from the chat. I think we're in good shape. No, the only thing I wanted to mention, Josh had put something in earlier, um, and I think having the related system component on this assessment tool speaks to what he mentioned, and that's that one of the strengths of the framework is that we can set goals and take actions in those components that are within our sphere of influence, but we can also benefit and learn from actions and goals that are happening in other systems components that we may not have a direct influence on. And you mentioned uh, the word integration again, and, and that's really what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so the next part of the assessment tool it takes, it would take your team through a process of reflection. And the, the intent is to give you an opportunity to identify and address information gaps, consider and incorporate different perspectives. Um, it may um, help you gain insights into what new actions your state, territory, or tribe might want to take to make progress toward your overall goal. Um, and so we have a set of questions that relate to identifying which, what strengths um, you saw as a, you know, as a result of your responses, um, what barriers might exist, um, what opportunities might help you to, you know, advance um, in, in a particular action, um, what steps your, uh, your team or your state uh, or tribe could take on this opportunity or what more do you need to learn. Um, and then also what, you know, connections have you identified um, in your responses that relate to other parts of the system components? Because that might help you to identify those places where um, actions might, you know, reinforce each other and give you even more um, sort of excitement and momentum to, to jump in, um, in in one particular area or another. Um, and uh, if you, you know, sequence them in, um, in a particular order, you might get to the end result faster. So um, again, these were things that as we had our state um, trying out the assessment tool, these were things that we realized were important considerations to, to pull out and highlight for states as, as, as they use the, the assessment tool. So I'd like to ask um, everyone to think about their responses to the workforce and professional development action items that we just reviewed from the tool. Um, and, uh, you know, ask yourself these reflection questions, and I'm sorry they're not all on, on the same slide, but I'll go back to the first one. So um, we'd just love in the chat if anyone has anything they'd like to share related to any strengths that they identified or barriers that this raised for you or opportunities or actions um, that, you know, things sparked for you as, as you were thinking about this, as you were hearing about, um, you know, what other participants were responding in chat. Um, we'd just love to hear what you, what, what, what is this sparking for you? And then the next step, if we, because um, uh, I actually see we're, we're also getting towards the end of our hour together. So I'm just going to move us on to the next step. Um, which is using the action planning tool. So we devised a tool that just helps you to take what, you, um, what you've done in, in using the tables in identifying um, you know, the um, uh, action, possible actions and thinking about the challenges and opportunities and um, uh, uh, just all of the, the um, responses that you had um, looking across your across the the tables across the system components for those areas of synergy, um, and uh, and then uh, walk you through a a, a a set of questions to help um, identify the top priorities that would um, make the most sense for your state to focus on in the next six to twelve months, um, and what that 
brings us to is um, a table in which you would identify those priority actions within each system component um, and then uh, identify the key, key steps it would take to achieve it, the resources available to, uh, to pay for the actions <laughs> or to, to get it done, um, the resources needed, um, uh, if, if any are needed, um, the persons responsible, the other partners and stakeholders who would need to be involved in some way, the time frame for um, uh, you know, achieving and implementing the action, and the measures of success. How will you know if you've been successful in, in accomplishing or achieving this action? So at the end of the, the day, um, you would have uh, uh, a set of actions that align with each of the system components that you could use to guide your efforts moving forward. And the idea is that you could continue to sort of use this in an iterative process over time and uh, kind of reconvene every you know, month or every couple of months to monitor your progress, see how things are going, assess what's, what's changed in the landscape of opportunities or challenges, um, and you know, kind of keep this a, um, a living document, if you will, so that um, you know, it's, it's still there to help guide your actions and, and changes over time. Um, Nancy, is there anything that you wanted to add about the action planning or any of the, um, in your work with states, how this, this might have been useful if they could have used it or anything that you wanted to, to reflect on? Well, the only thing that I would say here, um, I see Sunny put in the chat lots of great resources to use. And I would just say that our goal in both of these webinars that we presented is to not only provide you with the resources so that you know what's available, but to hopefully give you some idea of how they could be used in your state, depending on your needs and your systems, so that um, they're useful to you and they could result in some improvement for you. And I'm going to just, we only have a couple of minutes, so I just wanted to take a quick moment on this um, reflection. And you can write in chat, but I'm not, going to, I'm not going to land here for very long, given the time that we have. But to think about, as we've presented the framework to you and the supporting resources that we've presented, if you've had any ideas, if it sparked any ideas for your states, parent, family, and community engagement plans, what might your next step be? And even more interesting, or maybe the place to start would be, which of the seven state systems components will you focus on next? If anything stood out for you about a component area that you would like to work on, because not all of the component areas initially bring family engagement to mind. And I, it's always fascinating to me to see how people begin to embed family engagement in all of the component areas. And Ardith is asking a question about, have you found a way in the action plan to consider the connections between components? I don't know if you want to speak to that, Anna. Yeah, I mean, I think the, um, the, the column that we added uh, is an attempt to at least bring attention, attention to the fact that there are connections among the components. The planning guide, um, the, or the planning tool, it really has, it does break it out um, by system component. Um, and that's as far as we took it. Um, I think, I, I'll be curious if we are able to get feedback from states and tribes that begin using the tools, if there is something else that would be helpful in um, really zooming in on those connections. Um, but I think we're we, uh, in, in an effort to not overburden or you know, create a tool that is too cumbersome, we decided to keep them separate but leave it, put enough um, breadcrumbs along the way so that, you know, that it, those connections become apparent and, and, and are part of that prioritizing process um, for really honing in on, on those actions. So a state may, may end up with a table or a, an action plan that you know, has very little in one 
system component, but has a lot um, in a handful of them because they're so inter, you know, connected and related. So um, it's really just going to depend. Mm -hmm. And Josh put a comment in the chat responding to that question as well. So, yeah. And I see it's we're right on the top of the hour. So I just wanted to point out some of the related PFCE resources that we've mentioned through these two webinars, resources on consumer education and engagement, the key indicators of high quality family engagement for your QRIS systems, and the relationship-based competencies. And you'll see over in the left side our links uh, to connect to all of those resources. And the summary roadmap is basically just talking about um, the process of how you can use these resources to get where you want to be, becoming familiar with the framework, using the action and implementation guide, the assessment workbook, and the other resources that we've given you so that you can do your best work in fam parent, family, and community engagement. So I'd just like to say thank you for those of you who came. And those who can stay will stay on the line. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We hope you find all of these things useful and would love to get your feedback on them um, and find out what's going on. Thanks.